my dear friends, we uh, begin this Mass of the Memorial of St. Clair, Virgin. We ask through her prayers that God may hear us and that God may bless the intentions that you bring here today. So this Mass is going to be offered for you and offered for your loved ones and people that you carry every day in your heart. I also would like to offer this Mass for all those who have asked prayers that God who knows your needs, knows your struggles, knows also your aspirations and plans for the future, that he may shower his blessings on you and grant all of those favors. I pray for those who are struggling at this time, especially as a result of this virus, those who have lost their jobs, who can go back to school, those who are living in fear or living alone, pray and ask that God may help them handle and manage this crisis um, in the most healthy way. Pray for those who have died. We pray for those who continue to grieve their loss, for those whose hearts are hurt and broken, that God may help them find comfort and healing. Pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. Pray for many more opportunities to celebrate with friends and families. We also like to offer this Mass for an increase in vocation, especially given the number of um, priests and religious that have been lost to this virus. Pray that the Holy Spirit may inspire young men and young women to dedicate themselves. And also ask the prayers of St. Clear that more young people will be attracted to this, to this service. So we begin this Mass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, Bring we pray on this memorial of St. Clair. All your children to the perfection in our hearts. The spirit of adoption of sons and daughters may guide our conduct to merit to enter into the inheritance you have prepared for, you have promised for us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God said to me, Ask, as for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like the house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then I saw a hand stretched out to me, in which was written a scroll, which he unrolled before me. It was covered with writing, front and back, and written on it was lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you, eat the scroll, then go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he then said, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll I am giving you. I ate it and it was, so, it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
our response to the psalm is, How sweet to my taste is your promise. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees I rejoice as much as in all riches. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. How sweet to my taste is your promise. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than gold and silver pieces. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that there are angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man had a hundred sheep, one of them goes out straight, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hillside and go in search of a stray? And if he finds it, may I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of, the, of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones should be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, on this memorial of Saint Clear, I hope that you woke up well. I hope that you are feeling more hopeful, more encouraged, more intent, more purposeful. And I also hope that you are getting a better grip of whatever is happening around you. If you are not, and you feel like you need to talk to someone, please reach out and talk to someone. This is a very difficult time. It's a time like none other, at least in your lifetime and in my lifetime. No one has ever had to live like this ever before for this length of time. So the stress we should not undermine or uh, minimize the stress of this moment. The uncertainty, the lack of control, the news flashes, everything just triggers more and more stress. So if you feel like you are struggling, you are sad for no reason, or you are easily irritable, now those are all signs that the, your pre pressure is getting on you, your anxieties are intensifying. So if that's happening to you, please reach out to someone. It could be me, it could be anyone that you talk to. That you need to talk to someone, you need to process whatever is happening in your life at this time. Um, I would say um, a few things. Every human being, and that includes you and me, every one of us, has an inner desire to be relevant. Everyone. We have an inner desire to be important to somebody, to people, to the world. 
And that's why when we are ignored, we feel terrible, we feel bad, we feel and we are angry, we are upset because we want to be relevant and we want to be treated as such. We want to be attended to. We seek, we seek that acceptance, that 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 that, that, I, that whole idea that people value you or people know you or people you know um, cling to you or come towards you. It's just a general, it's it's something that we were born with. Now, most of us grow up and then learn to manage that desire because we have, God gave us intellect to be able to manage those very native, and like I said, native in the fact, in the sense that they are local to us. We're born with them. So we grow to manage all of those um, propensities. Now, there are so many people who don't. And so they seek that publicity or popularity. They want to be remembered no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's for the wrong reason. They just want to be remembered. And, and that explains, in most cases, some of the worst atrocities that have happened in this world. Where someone, a young child, who doesn't believe he can succeed or he can make a name, by doing positive things, suddenly goes into a school, could be his own school, and then guns down his classmates and his schoolmates, leaving a note that he hopes that he is going to be remembered for the rest of his life, or for the rest of our own lives. So, so people do a lot of things because they're seeking to be remembered. They want to, they want to be important. They want to be relevant. And so you see what was happening even here. The disciples also had that struggle, wanting to be relevant in their context. And I'm sure you are well aware of the contest between who was the greatest, who was the most important. And Jesus said, says, if you want to be important, you can be, but then you must be the slave of all. You want to be first, you can be, but you must be the last. And so here they came and asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus gave, gave them a very surprising answer. He brings a child. Now, I don't want us to get this wrongly. Jesus is not saying being childish is a virtue. No, it's not. Being childish is not a virtue, even for children. But we can tolerate that because they're just being who they are. But being childlike is a virtue. Childishness, there's no humility in childishness. Childishness is akin to stupidity. Now, we're not saying our children are stupid, but the behavior is stupid. But childlikeness is what the Lord is emphasizing here. Understanding that we depend on others. Recognizing that we cannot do it all by ourselves. Recognizing that we, we need or we depend or we need our parents or our teachers or others who are placed over us to guide us. So we are teachable. We are disposed to learn, to grow, to mature. So it is that humility that Jesus was talking about. So he says, unless you and I can learn to be humble, that means to tame that natural tendency to be popular, to be the only cock crowing, to be the only one, you know, the only light shining, unless we're able to tame all of that, because what that does is, it, it turns off our inclination to be arrogant, to be prideful, to be vainful. And, and, and none, none of that, none of that pleases God. So I, I don't know where you are in this place. And I don't want anyone deceiving themselves. Well, I'm not like that. If you're not like that, then remember the last time you felt very angry and very upset 
when someone ignored you. We take it really, really personally when that happens. So that's the first thing I want you to think about in your own life. Are you childlike? Are you humble? Or is your natural tendency to be first, to be important, to be relevant, more important to you than anything else and conditions how you treat other people? Because when we are humble, we treat others with respect. We treat others with dignity. We don't put them down. You only put people down when you think you're more important, you're more relevant than they are. You're more valid than they are. So that's the first thing that Jesus wants us to, 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 to think about and to, to interrogate ourselves about. So ask yourself if you are childlike. The second thing is a question that the Lord asked. It says, if a man had a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hillside and go in search of the stray? Now, at the time when I, I, had, um, I had a lecture where people were present, remember I asked this question. I said, if you were this one person, this one shepherd, with hundred sheep and one of them straight straight down the hillside and you're not sure where it's straight to will you honestly leave 99 sheep with the possibility of them straying too to go search for the one or will you just count your count, cut your losses take the 99 and forget about the, 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 the one and I said yeah the rational choice theory which unfortunately is the living theory of human behavior. Yes, will tell us, cut your losses. You know what? You're better off taking your 99 than wanting to go for the straight and then risking losing more from the 99. That's what most people will normally do. And that was the answer I got. People were very honest. They said, you know what? So, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go with whatever is, whatever is left. Because who knows what has happened to the other stray. However, I, I understand the theory of Jesus because the theory of Jesus here is the exact theory that we operate, operate with in the military. We don't leave a comrade behind. We don't leave no one behind. It doesn't matter if they were dead, injured. However, we make sure we retrieve them, we bring them back home. So, so that's one of uh, our principles, the principles of um, our engagement, that we never leave anyone behind. But that's not how the world operates. And so most people who were operating in the world fashion said to me, no, they will not do that. And then I said to them, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it looks like it, it doesn't make, it, it, it's too risky, it's too dangerous. It is um, unreasonable to do that, to risk so much for one person who chose, to, who chose to stray. And I said, how about if you were the one person who strayed and people were thinking the way you're thinking right now about you? How would you feel if you knew that your guys or your shepherd was willing to dispose of you, to dispense of you, or to dismiss of you? In preference of the other 99 how would that make you feel and suddenly it was like well I'll be really disappointed I'll be really upset that they won't come looking for me and that's exactly how we all feel we think everyone else is disposable until we are that one but it doesn't have to be me it doesn't have to be my child and this is what we see especially with this virus Many people who don't care what is happening until their mother is sick, until their son is sick, until someone, maybe they themselves are dying, then they begin to take it seriously. It doesn't have to be that way. Whether the lost sheep is you or someone else, you must go looking for them. You must care for them. It doesn't have to be your brother or your sister for you to risk everything for. So, so these are very um, strict principles that the Lord is laying out here for us. If you have to wear a max weight, even if you don't get sick, 
Wait, because of someone else. Because that someone could be some could be you any other day. God is so merciful and so kind. He's so generous. If he paid us based on our conducts, most of us will not be standing. But he's so merciful. And I hope we never take his mercy for granted. That we use it and make the most of our lives. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, continue to watch over your children. As you open our minds every day to learn of your word, to grow in your spirit and in the knowledge of your name, touch our hearts, melt them, O God, and refashion them according to the image of your Son. We pray to the God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us who have been blessed beyond measure in this life, whether with good health, with material resources, with spiritual wealth, or with anything else. And we may recognize others who are not so blessed and step, step towards them and support and help and give them whatever assistance we can. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are lost. Pray for those who feel lost, even if they are not really lost. Pray for those who feel alone. Pray for those who feel ignored like no one cares about them. Pray for someone who might want to take their own lives today because they can no longer accept life in its stems. That the Holy Spirit may touch their hearts and turn their minds to see and to behold what is still possible, what's still possible for their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for your own needs and the needs of your families. And as a God who knows where we're struggling and where the pain is most, a God may come and smooth and soothe those areas in our lives and help us find some peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for those who are sick with this virus, especially those in very critical situations. That the grace for God's the grace of God's healing. From this altar may be granted to them in full measure for their recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and there for our death. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of men has become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power, you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, 
fulfilling your will and, and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Most merciful, 
an ever loving God. On this day, there are still so many of your children who cannot attend Mass physically and participate in this sacrament. They depend on spiritual communion. So we ask, O oh God, that your grace from this altar and from this table may reach out and nourish and bless and heal and strengthen and enlighten and transform their lives to meet every favor that they ask for. These are the prayers we make, and we make them through the same Christ, our humble Lord. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us now or joining us later. Pray that whatever favors you ask in through the intercession of St. Clair, that God may richly bless and grant. So always remember, you remain the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. Clair and our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing the song, Abide With Me. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide, when all the hell falls, fail and comforts flee, all the helpless who abide with me.